Alright guys, we've a really simple scene set up here, just a, a plane and a teapot and a, a box here. So what we're going to take a look at is how we can um, put some lights into the scene and um, how we can add cameras into the scene as well. Okay, really simple scene. So I have a material, just a, a physical material, put on all three of these objects. It's exactly the same material. I've taken all the shine off it by just putting its roughness up to one so we'll pro probably adjust that in a wee minute so lighting is um quite simple to set up but hard to get right um what we've got on our create panel is a lighting layer and within that we've got photometric and arnold typically you'll only want to use photometric or arnold we'll stay away from the standard lights those are there for legacy reasons okay so photometric i'm going to go target light now depending on how your scene is set up you might get this um physical camera exposure control dialogue coming up i'm going to click yes okay because i want to have some exposure control here so just going to click i'll show you where that is as well just click yes if we go to rendering and environment these are the controls here for the physical camera exposure control and i'll show you how we can use this value here to um, brighten or darken our scene okay so i've got create turned on here for target light and what i'm going to do is click and drag okay now I'm also going to just raise that light up slightly, something like this, okay? Now you'll notice it's made absolutely no difference to our scene at all, okay? So what I'm going to do here is turn on um, a couple of different ways we can do it. If we come to the standard um, little uh, viewport label here and click it, we can come down to lighting and shadows and go illuminate with scene lights, okay? And it doesn't look that much better apart from darkening on the other side. So let's just turn that back off. Go to default lights and instead let's turn on high quality. Okay. So you can see now we've got shadows casting on the floor. And we've got um, the back side of the teapot as dark as it should be. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just hit render. Now that's this little button up here. And what render means is... Turn your scene into an image, which can then be taken into Photoshop or After Effects, or if it's an animation, Premiere, or it's basically how you get your stuff out from um, 3ds Max and into an image manipulation program of whatever description. So I'm just going to hit render, and you'll see we get these little boxes flying out, and here is our scene, which we can then save you know with all these different image formats here I'm not going to bother saving it but um, that's how we save it out okay now you'll notice one thing here um, we've got sharp hard edged shadows here okay and let's just um, move that down here and I'll use this little button here to make a clone of it okay what I'm going to do is come into the light settings here and let's try um, increasing its um, intensity, let's say from 1500 to 3000. And let's render that. So our scene's a little bit brighter now. You can see there's the clone here. Here's the, re here's the new render. Okay. Let's see how we can um, change these shadows a little bit. So if we look on the settings for the light, we've got shape and area shadows now at the minute it's set to emit light from point now if you imagine um an infinitely small point here casting light is going to create sharp shadows okay but <clears throat> okay but what happens if we go to say rectangle we immediately you can see the shadows here a little bit softer so let's hit render and check out our shadows now Okay, so on our original image, we've got sharp shadows here. Now we've got these nice soft shadows. And 
the bigger I make that um, um, light shape, which I can't find the settings for. Here it is here, sorry, here. Okay, and uh, let's try increasing the width. I'm hitting render again. We start to get some weird artifacting here. Um, let's just reduce that down a bit, say there again. I'm not actually 100% sure what's causing that. Let's take a look around our scene. So there we go. Okay, so you can see the shape of the light. Let's make it two by two. And uh, let's render again here. Now you'll see I've been swinging my view around here and that leads me on to the next part of this sort of short tutorial. What would happen if I wanted to get back to that exact image here, the clone, to compare them? Well, it would be really difficult. I could try and sort of eyeball it and see if I can get it right. And I did a reasonable job there, but it's not exact. There is no way of getting back. Um, what we do, if we know we want to render a particular view, well then that's where cameras come in. Let's just close this for now. And this. Okay. But before we get into cameras, let's just create another light. So you'll see this light has a blue line pointing down towards here. And if I press F3, you can see the little yellow box here. That's called the lighting target, or the light's target. And if I move that around, the light always points towards that target. Okay. If I move the light, you can see the light will swing around. Okay. So all I'm going to do is clone this light. I'm just going to hold down, um, just hit F3 there to switch back to solid view going to hold down shift and just drag this to the other side and I'm going to choose copy and I'll turn this one down quite a bit down to about 1000 and let's take this one back down to 2000 <coughs> okay and let's just let's just find a view that is kind of nice something like uh, let's just zoom in a wee bit so we get rid of those little edges there let's render that so we've now got full frame actually I missed a little bit here didn't have that zoomed in tight enough I'll just make um, the box a little bit bigger just to get rid of that okay so let's say we want to render this over and over again we've got a character in here and we're, we're doing some sort of look development for it so what we do is, once we've got, um, sorry, that was an error, I don't know why that was popping up. Um, once we've got the, the, the view that we want, we can just hit Control and C. And what you'll see is that up the top left hand corner, we now have physical camera. And we've got settings for a camera here. Okay, so Control C is create a camera from your view okay so if I hit P to switch back to my perspective view you can see the viewport label up here now says perspective and zoom out you'll see we've now got a camera so I can look around my scene and maybe add you know another object or something let's just add a Taurus knot here um, wherever it is Taurus knot Something like that, and just raise it up a little bit to this. And let's just add this material to it. I'm just clicking and dragging on the sphere and I'm moving it over. In fact, I'll put this one on it and I'll make it a different color. Let's put that one on it and make this a nice red color, something like that. Okay, now I'm going to hit C to switch back to camera view. Okay, um, we've still got exactly the same view. Let's just pull these in a bit and hit render. Okay, so there's our camera and our lights. 
Um, we can have more than one camera. So if I go back to perspective, and let's say we want um, a real big close up, something like something a bit more dramatic, like this. Okay, let's just make sure that's sitting on the ground here. Let's just pull it up slightly. Like there. Give us some more segments to um, make sure it's smoother. In fact, I'll just add a mesh smooth modifier. So there we go. Now I'll hit Control C again. Control C. There's another camera. So I'm going to hit P to go back to perspective. And let's take a look at our scene now. We now have two cameras. So here's the first camera here that we made. And there's the second camera there that we made. And if I hit C now, um, it immediately switches to whatever camera we've got selected. So I'll go back to perspective mode by hitting P. If I have no camera selected here and I hit C, it's going to pop up and say, right, which, which camera do you want to switch to? So let's switch the camera to. And let's render that. Okay, these are called buckets, by the way. So each um, core that your computer has, you'll get one bucket. So, okay. Let's just close that. Let's zoom out a little here. Okay, let's um, just make these a little bit smaller. Let's say one by one. And one by one now let's say we want to do adjust that camera slightly let's just hit c down here we've got camera controls okay if i hit p for perspective view you can see we get one set of controls for perspective view if i hit c to switch back to camera two we get different controls so we've got dolly camera okay We've got, um, I think this one's uh, perspective. Okay. I'm just going to undo that. We've got, um, forgive me, I forget all the names. We've got roll camera. Okay. We've got truck camera. And we've got orbit camera. And we've got maximize viewport. Now, frequently when you're using cameras, you might want to work on four viewports. This is one of the only times that um, I find that you'll want to work with quad views when you're working with lights and cameras. Okay, there are other instances as well, but it's mainly this. So let's just select our, ca our physical camera to view here and hit render production. There we go. So that's how we set up really simple lighting and cameras. Okay, thank you.